advisors and business associates who say i should not tell you this but this information is important and i think you should know it my name is robert kiyosaki i am fourth generation japanese american born and raised in hawaii my mother was a registered nurse and my father had a phd in education he was also the superintendent of education for the state of Hawaii. What broke my heart was that although my mother and father had a great marriage, the only time they ever fought was about a subject called money. In 1970, at the age of 50, my dad was downsized. He never recovered from that. I swore my life would be different. So in school today, we're focused on a thing called SAT, or Scholastic Aptitude Testing. We want to find out how good you are at reading, writing, and arithmetic. Very important skills. And how, depending on how well you do with SAT, the next thing they focus on is professional aptitude testing, whether you should be a doctor, a lawyer, fire chief, uh, secretary, or whatever. It's a professional training. But what school fails to focus on or train people on is a thing what I call financial intelligence. We never discuss the subject of money in schools. So what do I mean by financial intelligence? Well, if we gave $10,000 to 100 people, 80 of them, or 80%, would have nothing left at the end of a year. 16% with the same $10,000 might have $10,050, what you would get by putting it in a bank. And 4%, given that same $10,000, would have anywhere from 20,000 to a million or more. And that's what I mean by financial intelligence. So when we go to school, we learn to read these things. But we never learn to read these, financial statements or annual reports. We never learn financial literacy in school. Uh, I founded a company called Prime Cable uh, in 1979 with two other people. Today, that company, if it were sold, would sell for about a billion, six hundred million dollars. I'm a graduate of the University of Texas. I got an MBA in finance. For the last eight or ten years, I've been a turnaround specialist. Uh, so companies will call me and ask me to help them fix their problems. One of the unfortunate things about being a turnaround specialist is that sometimes there's some fat in the organization that has to get eliminated. And so in the last three years, I have fired uh, probably well over 200 people. Most people that I know haven't bothered or figured out a way to go learn the rules so that they will spend the time and understand how to go make money with money. And that's what cash flow is about. It's learning the rules of the game on how to make money with money. One of the great things about uh, money and the rules of the game for money is that they can be taught and they can be learned. One of the things that is very important to me is that my children especially understand the rules of the game of money so that they will never be one of the unfortunate statistics who gets fired in a corporate downsizing by somebody just like me. When I studied accounting in school, it was possibly the single most boring subject I ever studied. So I had to create a system that was easy enough for me to understand. So these are the basic forms necessary for financial intelligence. One is called an income statement because it has an income and expense, also called a profit and loss statement. There is also a balance sheet, and the balance sheet has assets and liabilities. And these are the very basics for financial literacy or financial intelligence. I soon realized the main cause of financial struggle was due to confusion between the definitions of an asset and a liability. I looked in the dictionary at the definitions of assets or liability. And I got very confused by the dictionary's definition, so I made up my own. My definition of an asset is something that puts money in my pocket. And my definition of a liability is something that takes money out of my pocket. So what caused my mom and dad to struggle financially is my dad, because his banker and his accountant and his real estate agent told him a house is an asset, by this definition, it's actually a liability. He also counted his car as an asset. Yet by this definition, his car was not an asset, it was really a liability. And if these definitions are still too confusing, I simplify it even further. The new definitions are, if I stop working, assets will feed me, and a liability will 
eat me. And I hope that's simple enough. So the most important thing about being financially literate or the ability to read numbers is understanding a thing called cash flow. I can tell the difference between a poor person and a middle class person by simply looking at their income statements and balance sheets and figuring out which direction the cash is flowing. So I will show you the cash flow pattern of a poor person. Generally a poor person, all they have is a job. The income comes in from the job, goes down, they pay their rent, uh, clothing, a little food, and goes out the expense column. And this is a cash flow pattern of a poor person. The cash flow pattern of a classic middle class person is, very, is a little bit different. Income comes in this way, but with a middle class, they probably have a mortgage, they probably have car payments, they probably have credit card payments. It comes up again through the expense column and then out this way. So what you see here are the cash flow patterns of a poor person versus a middle class person. So the cash flow pattern of the rich is different. The cash flow pattern of the rich flows from the asset column into the income column. So while the poor and the middle class are focusing on income, what the rich are focusing on is the asset column. And the asset column is the great secret of the rich. So for those of us who weren't born rich and what we have is a job, Every time money comes in, this is the point of choice. This is where you make the decision to be rich, poor, middle class. If when this dollar comes in and you take the dollar out this way, then it's your decision. If you go and buy yourself a new t-shirt, uh, cappuccino, a new lunch, then you're choosing to expense it right out. You're choosing to be a, a poor person. If instead, when you get a pay raise or more money, what you do is you go and buy a bigger house, a new car, or you take a vacation on your credit card, then what you are choosing to do then is to be a middle class person. And if you choose, instead when the money comes in and you choose to put it in the asset column, then you make that decision to be rich, poor, middle class. By putting it in the asset column, at this point you're choosing to be a rich person. But the choice is up to you, nobody else. Earlier in this tape, you met Keith Cunningham. And Keith told me a story about when he was in graduate school for his MBA. A gentleman named Ray Kroc, who was the founder of McDonald's, came to speak to the class, the MBA class, and asked the class, he said, ladies and gentlemen, what business am I in? And the whole class just cracked up. And they said, well, Ray, of course we know what business you're in. Your business is hamburgers. And Ray said, no, my business is not hamburgers. My business is real estate. So what Ray was saying, was that his profession was in sales. He basically sold hamburgers. But his business was down here. His business was real estate. So when I ask most people, what business are you in? Let's say I ask a banker. They say, oh, I'm in the business of banking. So no, your profession is banking. Or I ask a doctor, what business are you in? They say, I'm a doctor. And what the, mis the mistake they made is their profession is being a doctor. So your profession is you working for money. And what your business is, is your money working for you. And the main reason so many people struggle financially is they're not minding their own business. They're minding somebody else's business. So looking at this chart one more time is over here in your profession or your job or being an employee, you're working for somebody else. You're working for the shareholders. Over here, the first person you're working for is the tax department. Here you work for the government. And over here, if you own a house, you're working for the bank because you got a mortgage. So if you want to be rich, happy, and successful, you've got to mind your own business and not work for everybody else. Corporate America is very exciting for someone in my position. I'm single and a woman and doing very well, and I'm very happy with my job, but it takes very long hours and hard work to be successful in corporate America. Cash flow helped me realize that I was spending a lot of time making other people rich and uh, that I was stuck in a rat race. So, uh, and learned ways that I could get out of that rat race. And uh, it was great experience for me, a learning experience for me. My name's Jeff Bassett. I'm an investment broker and I'm 25 years old. I have a degree in economics and was trained on Wall Street. Now my average client is between 40 and 50 and they've done nothing for their financial future. Now me, 
I have no plans of working past 30. At 30, I'm going to be in the Cayman Islands, trading options and commodities from my yacht. And cash flow showed me how easy it's going to be to achieve. So what causes financial struggle is that most people who believe in hard work, what they do is they focus on their job. They have you know, husband and wife working, and maybe one of them will take a second job. So you have three incomes. And so what they're focusing on is income here. So their income goes up, and they believe in hard work. The problem with hard work in the income column is that as your income goes up, so does a thing called taxes go up. So you pay more in taxes, but you feel you've got this raise, and it's worth it. And so what you do is you go out and buy a big house, or a new car, or a new boat, because your banker or your account tells you that it's an asset. And so this goes up here. And so you're working harder, your expenses are up, your liabilities up, and bam, suddenly you're downsized. And what happens then is you lose your income. But does this go away? The answer is no. Does this go away? The answer is no. And that's what causes financial insecurity or financial struggle. The answer is, if you had focused like the rich do on not working for money but having money work for you, even if you la lost your job, your assets will continue to feed you. So having a whole stack of liabilities and no assets, that's what causes financial struggle or financial insecurity. In the past, what we would do is look at jobs as our security, and that no longer is possible. That is an obsolete thought. That's an obsolete process. Our entire educational system has been set up to prepare us to be really good employees. That no longer works because we don't even know if the company is going to be there within five years or 10 years. So what we're discovering is that the life of a company as well as the life of an industry can be shorter than three years. So that means that we have to be open to looking at different ways in which we can do what we came to the planet to do. So we need to look at our education and we need to look at our knowledge base in a very different way. So what most hardworking people do is they focus on their income, working hard at their job, income comes in and the first line of expense for most people is a thing called taxes. But what the rich do is by having their income come from the asset column, the income comes up this way. And the way the rich avoid taxes is just like a fuel filter on a gas line. What the rich do is they attach a corporation or several corporations. And what a corporation then does is bleed off as many expenses as possible before their income is taxed. And that's how the rich avoid taxes, where a person who is an employee or a w 2 -er is taxed first. So what the rich do through a corporation is that they take off some of their expenses. What they do is they earn, they spend as much as they can, and they're taxed on what's left. And what the poor and middle class do is they work hard, they earn all their money, but the government taxes them, then they try and spend or live on what's left. And that's one of the big differences between the poor, the rich, and the middle class. Wayne and I own one of the largest real estate schools in the state. And one thing we find about people and students who are entering the real estate business is that we give them the basics of real estate, but they don't know the basics of investing. Well, I hope I can teach the students more about the fundamentals of accounting, investments, and finance, so they'll have the tools that they need to go out and actually do that in the real world. Mm -hmm.